Jokic has it. Clock takes, got to put one up. Jokic for the win. Oh, it's good. Jokic got it off in time. The Denver Nuggets are the best clutch team of the last decade. As Denver has emerged these past few years, I've come to the realization that they play their best basketball against the best teams, and they thrive when games are bogged down and opponents play their best hand. In other words, the essence of what makes the Nuggets successful translates perfectly to clutch playoff-style basketball against elite competition. That essence starts with Nikola Jokic, but it's also about his pairing with Jamal Murray in the two-man game, which is packaged with Aaron Gordon as a release valve around the rim, which is all surrounded by elite shooting and cutting. Take something simple like a hawk cut for Nikola Jokic. This has given the league problems for a while. And even really good defenses struggle with it because there's no easy way to stop this. The Celtics have Jason Tatum linger on the cut to slow down Joker, but that just frees up Contavious Caldwell Pope, and it's a show and go and a jumper. Boston's full of defensive answers, so they switch the cut the next time with Drew Holiday, but Jokic reads it and just stops in open space. Jalen Brown tries to help in the driving lane, and that's shooting fish in a barrel. When they come back to it again, Tatum successfully jams up Jokic's route, so Porzingis can work to deny an entry pass, which pushes Jokic's catch way out high. And KP does a nice job defending the back down here and using his length to bother the shot. So later in the game, Jokic adds a wrinkle. He acts like he's setting a screen for Murray, but he's really cutting off that pick again. And that fake means the screen defender is no longer worried about jumping in front of his path. Jokic has space to cut into, and that gets him on the move with really deep position to attack Porzingis. These plays are against the best defenders in basketball, and a simple action like this is such a challenge because Jokic is so hard to guard one-on-one -on -one in space like this. But then they force you to send a double team, and he's surrounded by smart cutters and elite shooters. So Denver is like a perfectly balanced organism, understanding vulnerabilities in the system and collectively attacking those openings. And these are all versions of the same play where different reads produce totally different results. And because the whole team functions collectively, you get harmonies like this. Jokic tells Michael Porter Jr. to clear the side, Anthony Davis is obsessed with taking away Jokic's cut, so he just screens for the ball handler instead, and now Jamal Murray's wide open. All teams communicate on defense, but the Nuggets talk a lot on offense. Joker tells a teammate to bring Austin Reeves into the screening action, Murray's just waiting for the pieces to set up, and Reeves desperately wants to avoid switching onto Jamal. That means AD has to help on Murray, but he wants to recover to Jokic, and Jamal knows exactly how to exploit that. The Celtics tried to stick Horford on Jokic while switching everything, so Joker gets another idea. Throw it to Reggie Jackson, jog to the point where Holiday's going to switch with Tatum, then cut right to the basket to counter that switch. This time it's Joker telling Aaron Gordon to roam the baseline for a pass, but the Lakers play single coverage, so Gordon tells Murray he's in isolation here so he can play accordingly, setting up this move where the help is way too late. And Gordon's there for any offensive rebound, so he can catch lobs in that spot, or as the Lakers found out last year, clean up any ambiguous shot pass attempts. When defenses bend toward Murray and Jokic, Gordon is a perfect outlet valve. The Celtics didn't want to leave Joker in pick and roll situations, and at times that left too much runway for the ball handler. So Jokic's gravity as a roll man meant Boston needed to bring a third defender to help, which lets Gordon sneak in from the baseline for the Murray lob. Jamal occasionally hits AG when he's tiptoeing around the basket looking for little openings, but there's an extrasensory connection between Jokic and Gordon when he's near the paint, where Aaron is always thinking about cutting and Jokic is ready to pass from every angle. 
40% of Jokic's layup assists this season have gone to Gordon. And on one hand, this mind meld is about Aaron finding little cracks in the defense and Jokic's sublime passing. But it's also about Gordon's size and aerial gifts where he funnels Jokic passes right into the basket. And nothing exemplifies these aerial gifts better than the lob he caught off the backboard in the fourth quarter against Boston, which is some crazy dunk contest coordination in a game. Compare that to a more typical lob target, and it's easy to see why Gordon's such a perfect fit. Now, think about guarding this in late game situations. Jokic is nearly impossible to stop in isolation. So when he gets a deep catch like this in the post, the Warriors slide a second defender over. Steph Curry's hug way down to take away Gordon, but Jokic still slips it in and Aaron's strong enough to draw a foul. This time, Gordon's in the opposite corner. They go to the bread and butter Murray Jokic pick and roll. The weak side defender flies over to take away Gordon, and that leaves a flamethrower wide open. And then Gordon tips it in because of a brilliant little reposition while the shot was in the air. With a minute to go, they run the pick and roll again. They put two on Murray, who finds Jokic, and that springs Aaron. Even when defenses stop the primary action, the Nuggets can always fall back on Jokic. Murray sets a pick with five seconds left. Joker fakes it to him to open a drive. As the weak side defender comes to help, Gordon cuts in behind him. This defender needs to slide down to that cut, but he doesn't because it looks like a scoop shot, only it's another lob. And this shot pass to Gordon at the front of the rim is almost more potent in late game situations when defenses are freaking out about Jokic scoring over a mismatch. He went to it in the in-season tourney against Dallas. When the Lakers switched the pick and roll, he punctuated that game with the hook pass. And then in the same week against the Celtics, they isolate so he can attack Porzingis in space, and it's a double spinning hook lob. It's natural to help off Gordon here, and Tatum thinks he's got Aaron covered, but he needs to body him so he can't elevate on the far side of the rim. And the reason he doesn't want to overcommit there is because it would leave the corner shooter wide open. And the Lakers were often aware of Gordon lurking on that baseline, but that just means help never comes on Joker, who takes about four steps into some nonsense. What's important here is that the Nuggets have elite shooters as outlet valves anytime defenses collapse on Jokic, Murray, or even Gordon. KCP's made 44% of his wide open threes in the last three years, and Michael Porter Jr. has made an unholy 51% of his wide open threes during his career. The result of this perfectly tuned offensive instrument is one of the most efficient crunch time attacks of the last decade. The wonderful site play-by-play -play stats looks at the time and score to determine the highest leverage moments in games. And using that definition, the Nuggets have a 128 offensive rating in the clutch over the last two years, 12 points better than average and they do it with the third most assists of any clutch team in the last decade. Some offenses resort to isolation in big moments, but the Nuggets just run their pet plays for Jokic and Murray, and those plays are littered with counters that amplify the entire system. We've discussed this unstoppable two-man game before in detail, and Denver just ramps it up when they need to. During normal parts of the game, Murray averages 23 points per 75 possessions with an offensive load of 46, meaning he directly contributes on an estimated 46% of possessions. Jokic averages 27 points per 75 normally and contributes 53% of the time. But in those high leverage moments, Murray's scoring goes up while his load jumps to 51 and Jokic's scoring goes through the roof, averaging 38 points per 75 with a load of 66. Basically, everything just runs through this duo, only they're better than they normally are, and Jokic in particular becomes a Super Saiyan scorer. 
And in that sense, Denver thrives on the psychology of these big moments. That's that mental side. That's that uh, that kung fu, that um, that fighting spirit, you know. So. So do you feel like you play better when it feels like there's more pressure? Yes. On you? And this shows up on the defensive end too. There's an intelligence to the Nuggets defense that's built for playoff style basketball against the best teams. The Thunder attack Jokic in pick and roll here and watch KCP sit on the pass to the popping big, then jump back to pick up the cutter and Jalen Williams did well not to turn it over there. Against the Warriors, Gordon calls out Clay Thompson's cut over to the wing. Jokic temporarily steps out until MPJ can recover. Then Joker stays in front of the ball, so AG slides over to help. And instead of recovering back to his man, Jokic wisely stays to help Murray, and that bogs down the play. And when Gordon's man breaks free, they just switch it perfectly to nullify the advantage. Aaron's quick enough to stay with a small guard, and that is just a defensive clinic. The Nuggets are the best team in basketball at rotating, working as a unit to recover as efficiently as possible and minimize any advantage from a four on three. And then they're also just big physical defenders who can't be bullied. We detailed this last season too, and it makes it hard to target Jokic in pick and roll situations because they recover to the next pass so quickly, and they're actually hard to match up hunt in general. Jokic ends up on a guard in transition, KCP is ready to help, and that leaves someone else on the 7-2 Porzingis, but the 6-10 Porter Jr. is big enough to handle that. Murray's usually their smallest player, and he's a good 6'4", so teams haven't had success trying to attack him with bigger wings like this. Their size allows them to switch and shift around a ton as a unit, because their system inoculates them against mismatch hunting, and it also lets them get really creative defensively just to throw teams off balance. Steph Curry puts Joker in pick and roll, and it looks like a switch, but it's a late trap from KCP. The closeout is there to run Clay off the line, and Jokic is already back in position to force the mid-ranger. They'll even stick Joker on a point guard like Drew Holiday, daring him to be more aggressive, and then they can spring a trap and get into their rotations. And look at how perfect this is. Gordon's double becomes a switch as Jokic peels off. KCP is all over Holiday and tells Jokic to get him. And at that point, the possession's cooked. This gambit doesn't always work. After all, Jokic isn't super quick and NBA offenses score about half the time they have the ball. But it might induce teams to break their normal offensive patterns. At the end of their comeback against the Warriors, they put Jokic on Chris Paul, and he sort of just sagged off him, daring him to shoot a pull-up three because he's making just 30% of those over the last three seasons. Then on the final possession, the Warriors had Paul screen for Curry to attack Jokic, and Denver can switch this because that late trap is coming, Curry's stuck, and now Murray's zoning up two players reads the pass perfectly and snags it out of the air. Wow. In the last two years, the Nuggets have the 12th best clutch defense of the decade, and combined with that incredible offense, they've outscored opponents by 28 points per 100 in high leverage moments. That's the best two-year mark of any team this decade. The only other squads in the top 20 in crunch time offense and defense were the Lakers in their first two years with LeBron and AD, the Warriors during Curry's MVP seasons, and the Kevin Durant years. And look, great teams are so good in close games because they're, well, great. And right now, no one has discovered an answer for Denver's offense, and even their defense continues to chip away at opponents when the stakes are raised. So only time will tell if someone figures them out, because as of right now, the defending champion Nuggets look difficult to eliminate because in the biggest moments against the best teams, they play their absolute best basketball. If you want to work in basketball, 
I have the place for you. It's Sports Business Classrooms, immersive program inside Summer League in Las Vegas. Past instructors in this program have included Commissioner Adam Silver, Mike D'Antoni, and tons of other industry leaders in the NBA and in media. Sign up using the code GREATDAY for $600 off for a limited time. There's more information in the description box below if you are interested. For additional content and to directly support this channel, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. Thanks for watching this one all the way through. And as always, I hope you are having a great day.